That was a nice jam, man. You know, sometimes you got to slow down the that pace. Failed, dude. And you get that, you know, get the drum back. You do That's drums. That's appropriate or break music, you know, like. Totally, right? We're about to be a break. Take it easy. It's like, dude, that's, you know, like, I'm going to go out for that kind of music. I don't need to, you know, have that, you know. Dropped. I'm just kidding. I love our break music. Whoever made that, I love you guys. We're just messing with you. Yeah, well, she, and, and we're surprised at the playlist because it's actually well, got said, some pretty popping jams. I didn't even jams. listen to half of it. And I was like, but it's really good, like, all the way through. I wish I could find music Damn. like that for, for you anything. make me a playlist? Uh, I know, right? Seriously. So, um, back into the action. It's been an exciting one. I mean, that last game when we saw yeah. versus Hendel Lopers and Burrito was nuts. Hendel Lopers come back, actually take the lead, tie things up between third and fourth. And now the tiebreaker, the decider, will be this final game. And, of course, at the top of the end of the spectrum, Burrito and D69, they'll be playing against each other. Before we get into that, though, there's a couple great things happening this weekend. We talked about the chess, but there's also a free champion weekend happening. What's Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Every single – I noticed it last night. I played on my free-to-play account. Every champion – is unlocked Ooh. to play this weekend. So get in there, try somebody new, see who you like. Every account is free to play here, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. And again, if you haven't uh, heard me before, the caster is a thing that is coming out uh, near you. It's a new high-res TV reality show that we're going to be putting together. Uh, $10,000 in prizing already promised on the line. And, How many uh, pennies is that? I, a, a bajillion. One million pennies? A, a quadrillion. Can I math that? You're not supposed to do it. You're not supposed to what if quadrillion pennies is actually like a million dollars? And so someone's like, "Oh, they said quadrillion pennies." There's a hundred. They said it. Pennies and a dollar. Bad math means I'm I'm liable. So I guess you just add two zeros, and that makes a hundred thousand. <laughs> High res, yeah, exactly. High res should have paid for some math classes if you don't want. You I think know, that's me. a million pennies. I think it actually is a million pennies. Hey man, listen. I'm not saying 10,000. That's all it is. Have fun and uh, check it out. Thecaster.tv so we can get more information, not from us silly. They have pennies in Europe. Goopers. I feel like I'm just your toddler asking. Over that. here, yeah. I don't know if they but have Dad, pennies why? in Europe, Jimmy, but we'll talk about it later. 2-0 uh, for D69 over Wolves. Burrito lost after winning the first game against Interlopers. 2-1. What a set. You got to rewatch that if you can. And, uh, of course, match three. Psh, this is the highlight reel. This is this is Tyson versus Holyfield here. D69 versus Burrito. Can't wait to see it. It's going to set. This is the last time they're going to play before land. This is going to set. <laughs> Uh, the pace, the expectation, I think, for a lot of people. Frozen Guard, Stone Keep. Very, they, these two have, like, really different bands mm. uh, than the rest of them. Burrito, if they're feeling it, I mean, Dude. Take, take them to Ice Mines. I, I don't mind it. I think that the Bugsy Drogo Stone Keep thing is just haunting. I think he's played so well on that map that it's just you want to avoid it at all costs. Serpent Beach will be the selection, and we'll head into the champion draft right now. Get this heavyweight title fight started between Burrito and D69. Burrito will have the advantage of first pick here. Koa? No, it's gonna be the Drogos. They're gonna take okay. it away. Okay. So D69, I expect I don't mind that. to take Makoa in this stage because Torvald just hasn't been prioritized today for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't know if they're just getting ready for the nerf, if they really think it's gonna do that much to him, but none of the Runic Sage today. That's a good point. Gork. That's a good point. Good impression. That in that case, you know, they may just want to start playing, it out. playing Inara because, you know, she's gonna be Popping off there you here. Go, dude. That, oh. If two seconds makes or breaks character. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Makoa gets selected. D69 loving the Grok. And hey, the way Spunky played it and turned the game around with yeah. so much damage, so much control, so much survivability. Uh, and that last one versus Burrito. I'm surprised they actually kind of give it up, but I don't think Grok's at that first pick level right now. It is for D69, and it does, you know, puts him in a good spot. And Burrito take the barrack. Uh, they give him that guaranteed target. Shaolin also taken away. Torvald still on the board and all of the healers. These teams just they just love it's like it's it feels so standard when these teams fight each against each other. You rarely see D69 and Burrito, either one of them baited against one another, so you see kind of like a weird lineup. And they just play it safe. They know what they need to do. Right now, D69 will not get caught out um, with anything that Burrito have to have to throw out there. Burrito though are in the position to where they may need to draft a flanker because Buck is already off the table. I could see maybe an Androxus coming out here, oh, but it's gonna hurt them. Big time, because they need another tank, I think, to stand uh, with this core of Grok, Mako, and Ying, and there it is. So again, they don't have anybody to really deal with a, a Knessa, potentially, but this isn't the best map for her, so they take the risk. Torvald could be good. There's no lockdown, so the, the buck is going to be pretty free reign, but probably taking four to five, it's going to be the Tyra. Well, okay, then. Is, <laughs> is I guess that's, you know, he's just starting right. to take this as the answer. 
Uh, Pip could have been another good look here, but they don't want to go the uh, interlopers route. I guess Tyra's, Tyra's been consistently buffed enough to where Europe is finally saying, okay, she's good. 20,000 buffs in a row. That's what happens, man. All right, again, I'm magic of perception. My math may, may be wrong. That may be penny math there for you guys. Uh, but Fusilade for Burrito for Lazy on the Drogos. Fortify Thiel at the moment for Barrick. Recurve Shaolin for Sun Commander. Flux Generator for Bonker. And Spirits Chosen for Bird. Ferdo will be taking Mercy Kill. Yeah, yeah. As well as Red Jera taking Resonance for his Ying. He's looking to contribute to some DPS. Shipa okay. taking Bounce House on the Buck, so it will not be. Erdo this time taking that buck, but Bugsy will have Maelstrom for his Grok, Elven Path taking Half Shell for his Makoa. All kinds of different things for D69. So with Resonance Ying, I really am starting to think that a lot oh, she of... switched to Focusing Lens. Ah, just to sh change things up. Okay, they wanted to think one, and then they go into the other the last minute. A common little play we've seen, but that Mercy Kill Grenade's gonna do work for Doe. Gonna be likely running a very different loadout than we saw Kamika running earlier with the Firebomb. Uh, basically, off the Mercy Kill, you might see some Bandolier giving him a little bit less of the uh, cooldown on that grenade. And Jera right now with the side of D69. Seem to be falling to Sun Commander's presence here. Bugsy needs to rotate, and he will wow. find one return. Takes off of those dual shock bolts and is bouncing back and forth between them. Big shock bolts, big Molotov as well. It's gonna force uh, Ruckus off the point here. Bonker falling lower and lower. Sheepa is gonna be there to take it home. 54% and climbing for D69 on the point despite Sun Commander Getting two kills. On this map, they can pull the tower off because they do not have any dive. They just don't have any dive on the side of Burrito. Who's gonna just go into Tyra's face and get her off that ledge? They don't even have a Makoa. Worm Jet Strogos, maybe. That's the only one, but then he, with Mercy Kill, I mean, Perdo, as good as he is, that's that's not a guaranteed win. And Lace has gotta be in the back line pressuring the point. They drafted him largely to be able to offset that. The objective is captured by D69, and I'm already seeing Burrito getting a little outdrafted here as well uh, for the play style that they're trying to go for. Ooh on this map yet again. Long range grenade, hopeful. Not gonna land though, two kills on the back line. Shifa, uh, really getting it done with this buck here. D69, love buck on Serpent Beach. Big shock balls into the back. It's gonna keep everyone in combat, prevent them from healing oh. up. Sun Commander goes down Bugsy with the pressure. Elven Path and he just holding down this front line masterfully, making it very easy for D69 to gain a lot of ground with this payload. You know, as they're pushing this, it'd be great to, to kind of tune to, to Bugsy's Grok and actually look at his loadout. I know we talk about one single card that, that a lot of these Groks run, but it'd be great, you know, you're seeing this on screen, Mails from Grok, why is it such a big deal? This is what he's going for. And Nick, you can kind of break this down a little bit better than me. Yeah, so the Thunderstruck here, every unique target, he's gonna get up to maximum of three seconds of the six total for his He's gone max range as well. He's gonna need to put this back into this team fight here. You can see it bouncing all around, doing a lot of damage. Conduit 3 there is going to give him some movement speed every time somebody is hit by a shock pulse as well. And I love the level 1 cards, the Shamanic Mind and Astral Traveler as he gets taken down here. It's a crossfire that lets things happen. Oh, but a bad time because, of course, she gets taken down as well. And Burrito fully hold after a couple of ults come through. And uh, despite Bugsy having a good roll of things and D69 pushing this about 95% of the way to the point, with 60 seconds left, they kind of fall to their knees and show their first chinks in the armor. And uh, just Nick, the two level ones too for Grok that he was running, the Astral Traveler, I love that, the repositioning and the Shamanic Might, just a little bit of extra health so he could stay alive. It's been a big, big mainstay of this uh, legendary meta. Very aggressive, he's gonna be able to have a lot of movement speed, putting a lot of damage into Bonker, actually forcing him back, but the hook says no. Come back here, has the Hexafire available, but will go down before he's able to use it. And no bonus damage off of the pluck. He's actually running the half shell, so he's not gonna hit as hard when he does get those pulls, but it's mostly Elven Path doing it just for the repositioning to bring targets into Tyra, into the Grok, into Buck, and to be able to finish him off that oh, way no. with focusing Lens Ying the as well. Arrow just saved her life. Jera able to get out. Uh, Sun Commander escorting her high ground hook. Um, He's not going to come back there. Bonker will not be pulled out of position. Finds the kill on the sheep of Bugsy. Narrowly escapes into the ghost walk before dying. Zero seconds. No one to keep things going for Burrito. Uh, for District 69, excuse me, before the overtime. So Commander does find Bugsy. Take the credits. Shut down the streak. Cauterize two online for Jera, Sheepa, and Bugsy. Record two for Peridot, as well as a Haven. He's getting a lot of credits. Lazy has not purchased an item yet.
Who would have thought? Period. Both of these teams uh, just tied up. Lazy on the defense as well. Hasn't figured out what he wants to spend his credits on. It is an important decision. He wants to see, and I like to do this too. Who's really my my target here? Who's who's hurting me the most? And where do I where do I want to prioritize? Do I need the cauterize? Do we need the wrecker? Uh, do we do we need you know something other utility for me? Can I flex? It goes to the morale boost and the haven too. That mitigates every single player on the side of D69. So a very efficient buy for him. And also just wants that ultimate up that much more. <laughs> Drogo's already charges ultimate fast. Nuts. This could be nuts here. It's going to be important for boxing out with Paradose. Someone's got to be able to put the heat on Paradose. Ooh. Very, 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 very low is she. But here comes the Dragon Punch around the corner. It's looking for a tank frontliner. We'll find Bugsy. Pretty good option there. And Sun Commander actually finds Jera as well. 30% already on the point. Or and Burrito. Here comes the salvo. That's huge. Fine for no. Lots of damage onto him. Bird trying to keep him nice and healthy. And Sun Commander flanking a little bit of his own here. Shotlin taking matters into his own hands. Elvin Path now on the point and with Half Shell. And them destroying that means it's going to be back up quite quickly for him to keep his teammates up. Half Shell already back up. And uh, he's able to just get 36%, tie things up with Burrito. They're counting a lot on Perdo's damage here. Hasn't been able to find those Mercy Kill targets like we've usually seen. But here's a Dread Serpent to maybe change things up. Two kills already for Burrito. There's the, the flip of the shotgun for Buck, but he's forced out 1,200 HP, one heroic leap. Just can't find the pressure. Burrito, 60% and climbing. D69, they've got the Sheepa caught out right now. Bugsy surging forward, finding good shock pulses. He's able to ghost walk to safety, trying to get back on the point. Trading out kills in the back line, however, it's going to be in favor of Burrito as they are much closer to capturing. Lazy uses the Dragon Punch already. Look at this, 89% wow. for him. Lazy's ultimate is at 100%. He could use it if he needs to. Elvin Bath takes down Thiel. Lazy's still alive, though, and cannot find the kill. But he will look to find Elvin if he can, and that is 4,000 damage for him. But will he go down? Sheepa's in pursuit. So is everyone else in D69. 200 health for Lazy. Sheepa turns things around, and that morale boost did pay off, but did it pay off enough? Will Burrito be able to compensate? for all that Lazy's done to keep them in this fight. He needs to get on the point. He needs to start the overtime here. 96% for Burrito. 99 now. Overtime is going to be started. 99 for both teams. Elven Path is back. Planet is off cooldown, but Dredge Anchor oh. could spell his doom. He's going to go into it. He's got to put it all on the line here, and he does find Elven Path trading out. Perdo is here to keep things going. Who's going to come out on top? Oh, nice dimensional link by Jerry. He stays alive. 184 health. Triple kill for Perdo. And now Mercy Kill is going to look stronger than ever. Watch out for this grenade, buddy. Whoa, 318 actually misses it and hits it onto the ruckus. But this is all D69 just taking control of this fight with at all odds. Against all odds, excuse me. And wow. their ultimates are charged here. So, I mean, the triple, don't get me wrong, the triple kill helps there. But I think the big turning point in that fight is when uh, La Lazy, he throws out the fire spit and then immediately goes into the dragon punch. Yeah. Elven Path survived the fire spit yes. by like literally one HP. So that could have been two kills and a big swing uh, for Lazy. Instead, he yeah. was forced to dragon punch to finish the kill on Elven Path and then almost goes down. Exactly, and then eventually he does fall down to Sheepa, who's pursuing him. And, uh, you know, Jera, I think another big part of that is the healing. 4D69 stays in that fight. Jera, 184 health, gets out alive with a great dimensional link. And, uh, hey, now that just means everyone on D69 has that support, whereas Bird has already gone down a little bit earlier. Birdo with a 12 streak here. All this damage from range, man. This guy just knows how to shoot. So much momentum. They gotta stabilize right now. They can't afford to lose. Uh, many more picks. There's a long distance board from Burrito. Not choosing to heal if his team wants to get the damage. There's the Dread Serpent on the front line, but still no kills in this engagement. Perido just chewing apart. Theo's going to go into the crossfire as well. He's forced out yet again. Hexafire coming out on the front line. Two kills for Bonker by the skin of his teeth. He's sitting at about 5% HP right now. Unreal plays to by Sun Commander every single time in that exact same position. Two in a row now. He is impaled. Perdo while during his ultimate because she's not CC immune, Tyra. And that just means that she gets out of position and is forced to retreat. All that DPS goes to waste. And that's just twice in the same exact scenario. Either Perdo needs to mix things up or he's got to keep a better eye out for Sun Commander. 53 seconds remain. Heat haze. Sheepa up on the high ground, pressuring out with Bonker. Bonker should win that trade. However, and it looks like he will force Sheepa out for the time being on a five streak. Lazy, he finds a good target for his Dragon Punch, shutting off the majority of the stain for D69 with only 30 seconds remain here. 
Uh, Bugsy is going to be able to get back into this fight, but a good move, I think a good look to just keep D69 on the back foot. Oh, the salvo hurts so much. Yara's still alive, though, and oh. he's many ways to crush. He pops his ult and dimensional links across the map back into this team fight. Yep, because you can do that anywhere that you have a clone, or when you pop your ult, he spawns clones next to his teammates. So if they're there, he can skip the whole map's horse ride, and that's exactly what Jared does. Incredible use of Ying's utility there that we don't often see. Savage for Purdue, 15 streak yet again. In. Didn't go down the crossfire at all. Mercy kill doesn't even need to be used. Bird goes down that fast. The push is successful mid air. What a pause in flight and 17 streak for Purdo. Jera is nuts. I mean, there's no way Lazy can know that, that illusory rift uh, was available, but that, that's a that's a big play there from Jera to just say, all right, guys, here we go, committing. That was the big, that was what they were looking to skunk us with. That's the thing, the big swing ultimate uh, that Burrito can almost guarantee themselves they're going to land. But Jera just shuts it all down with Dimensional Link. Damage dealt being narrowly led uh, by Sun Commander and Lazy just over the top. Uh, you don't usually see Ying consider one of the swing ultimate type of gals, but today it has proved different. 89% for Perdo's crossfire. He might be able to use it on this point fight, but again, Will he find Sun Commander? Will Sun Commander find him first? That's the question. Left side prioritized here by D69. And uh, Perdo just content to sit on this perch as he's done every single time. There's a huge aggression here coming out from Thiel, uh, but he's on the barrack. He's not on the Makoa, and that's just a different feel for him. However, Lazy finds Perdo early, forcing him off the high ground, and that's what they needed. That's the pick that they wanted to find. And now Sheepa falls as well. This is looking good for Burrito. Absolutely. Need to get on the point now, though. Start getting uh, that credit. Sun Commander is so close. Oh, hit the totem. <laughs> Did hit the totem? The yeah. dragon punch doesn't connect there. Bugsy does come out on top of that trade. Dome shield available for Theo, but now D69, they smell their advantage. They're moving in. Oh, no. Theo here going down very quickly. That turret is going to look like a great opportunity to just shed up some shock pulses if he stands inside, but he moves out of it wisely and lets the shield mitigate some of that. Mercy kill. Tyra coming through strong. Theo could be low. Perno, Bugsy finish off the kill as well. Sun Commander, one in the air. He's invisible. Can't find him, though. D69 wiping the table with Burrito at this moment. After things looked so poor for them, they just didn't capitalize on that early success they had, Nick. 42% in climbing, so still with a ways to go. Burrito had the chance to find the save us, but Aww. they've yet to find a payload here. The only point they have is from that defense. Shock Pulse. He missed. missed. Bugsy on the back foot. Doesn't have any cooldowns with the fire spit. Elven Path with the peel keeps Bugsy alive. That fight could have gone differently if they all had a thousand damage, you know, added on top of them, but this is what he wants. Just peeking in and out. Focusing lens. The extra 250. Oh, that's going to hurt. And Lazy now tries to find Jarek. Get him out of this fight. Fuselot can do a lot of damage. But here's the Tempest. Oh, he's dangerous. Architect Tonics. Oh, it's not there. Thankfully, he's able to dodge those turrets. But Burrito get themselves the capture of nevertheless. And uh, move forward. Two to three here. They're not done yet. Jarek's Jer Ying is nuts. You know, we don't spectate it very often, but. Very incredible, just snap dimensional links, as well as incredible tracking. Uh, for a guy, we, we don't see play much anything but support, so it's it's tough to you know judge his mechanical skill, but he's really finding a way uh, to flex that for us this game. And we saw Spunky shift away from Burrito into a damage roll when he got into another team. I'm sure Jero would be one of the better damage dealers in uh, probably players, man. in this pro scene oh. if he was able to do it. And that's just the power of taking you know some of those players who can do who could be superstars on other teams and combining them into one super team that hey they've done their job and they've won this latest Palin's Invitational crown themselves the latest kings of land and are trying to get back there with the number one seed. And D69 currently standing in their way. Burrito's got to win this game here. It's all up to this to determine what's going to go down. And D69 currently looking very, very strong, even though they're on the hold with a minute 26 left, they left on the clock. They can't win the, the game here. They will not benefit from the defense point. They're already True. at three. So, Burrito, they do need the conversion here. D69 can uh, play this pretty safe, and Burrito kind of need to commit here. Um, but at the same time, if they commit a lot of ultimates to get the conversion here, then they've set up uh, D69 for an advantageous payload fight in the potential final round. Two picks for one, though. D69 continue to hold strong. On I defense. love the patience play, too. We used to see Buck kind of with Bounce House play like this aggressive, you know, just jump anywhere and you can't deal with me because I've got a Torvald shield and I've got jumps out the wazoo. But now he's kind of played like this. Okay, let me pick my moment. And when I get in, I know I'm safe to be able to get out. But let me still just, you know, impact this game, but maybe from a little bit of a safer distance. Just the patience. You've seen Sheepa and Purdo shift with this champion. It's been 
pretty marvelous for me to watch as we've experienced him getting changed a little bit as the legendary system has been fleshed out. 20 seconds remain here for Burrito. They are so far from conversion, though. It's going to be a long shot and a very long overtime uh, if they do look for this conversion. Uh, honestly, at this point, I don't expect Burrito to commit a lot of ultimates to try and get this conversion. They're just trying to hope for maybe a, a fluke, really strong team fight where they get a lot of picks. Absolutely, Sheep, but now jumping in on Sun Commander picks the perfect time, and that's the patience we were talking about. Lazy in the back line trying to stop this uh, this incredible kind of zone that D69 have been able to put on. But here's Sheepa. He's got his number, and he will finish Arrow. things off. That's a narrow win there. In fact, this could be a very different team fight if Lazy comes out on top of that and then is able to pressure out the point. Bonker will fall. The old, the sole frontliner here being kept alive, but there is a lot of cauterized pressure. Uh, from District 69. They uh -oh. can't really play this much slower than they already are. Beautiful firebomb from Tyra. Does so much damage at Theo and Bugsy. Able to clean it up. So no ultimates uh, used from Burrito. Four ultimates to five, however. Still in favor of District 69. Burrito running down with uh, Nimble. So going into the Nimble 2. Wants the extra movement speed. Tyra with no movement skills is going to prioritize that card and has the flex credits to do it because they've won all of these objectives. Basically have you know, 600 above what Burrito do. Currently, you also see Bonker, Thiel, and Sun Commander with the Master Riding Snake. That's that's a high level of priority for that card. Yeah. That item. To the point, going to be very important. Uh, winning that high ground fight, you know, the low mobility tanks like Barrack uh, and like Ruckus, it's important for them to get that favorable positioning. Sun Commander as well would like to have vision of Sheepa, probably, you know, off the jump so he knows where to expect him to come from. Uh, but the Buck Wild, that burst damage, it's gonna make it difficult, even if you can, even if you can see coming. Misses a hook, Elvin Path, but still the zone is largely in their favor. And now in the back line is Sheepa. He's got another jump if he needs to. Actually hasn't even used it. Just used it to get back up onto the platform. And Lazy will find value from that Dragon Punch, but not the value he wanted, especially since Elvin Path is alive and well. And Lazy looking more and more in a danger zone than ever. In fact, Perdo will clean him up with some great tracking here from Tyra. So largely this Tyra pick has really paid off for D69 and Perdo specifically. 54% already for District 69 on the payload. They've got some staggering, some split up issues right now. A lot of shielding on the high ground, however. There's the firebomb to try and force some good positioning. Perdo finds a lot of damage on the Sun Commander from a long way away, 84%. Burrito's starting to make oh. their way back into this payload. Mercy kill gets them down to the threshold, and then comes in Buck with the Buck Wild. Jera keeps everyone alive. They've got their healer, but not anymore. Sheepa's going to have to leap out, and uh, he will give this up to Burrito for now. 55% on the objective. D69, no, this is their chance. They're going to build themselves up here by just trying to find a pick, maybe using the Elven Path hook Ancient to keep someone here. Ancient Rage is available, so he's going to be okay getting low, but he gets stunned and bursted, so he can't actually use it. This is huge. Deal's out of position, though, and so is Perdo. Now the heat is coming through. Needs to go big here with the crossfire. D69 what? sneak it away. You could see Maldon was so close. Standing on that payload in a big wow. mistake. Dropping the game for Burrito. You know, Theo having to run around, and also Theo kind of being part of the zoning pressure as well, just left the frontliner off of the payload. And I mean, there was just so many fast moving pieces. They were just having Brito look left and right. They forgot to look center. <laughs> A lot of damage coming out from Perdo, Bugsy, Sun Commander, and Lazy. Everyone hitting the mark uh, very, very well here. Big objective time uh, for Theo, 196 on the Barrack Jera on Hizing, 191. Big objective tie numbers across the board. A lot of shielding for Elven Path as well. The Tyra was, it was fairly impressive this game. I mean, it was it was good in the draft, right? They got a good setup. They got the right uh, climate around her to help her succeed. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of pressure, not a lot of uh, guys to have her number on Burrito. Yeah, that was, that was exactly what they were looking for. Just not drafting any flankers. Maybe the priority flanker on their side and knowing that they don't have that kind of stolzy on burrito that necessarily just loves androxis but you know as i say that i think sun commander was there and you know he definitely could have played one hell of an androxis on Shaolin right now but he's just playing really really well with Shaolin. frog isle will be the second map and nick if we know anything about frog isle it's fast games it's snowballs yeah burrito uh, this is where they had a great performance um, with their Shaolin player in particular. Uh, creatives, actually, no, Interlopers creatives. Yes, yes. Uh, absolutely nuts on this map. District 69 looked very strong on this map as well. They took the 4-0 uh, 
uh, against Wolves earlier on in the day. Drogos locked in first things first for Burrito. D69, they could look to draft uh, the Knessa, start getting that set up, because not a lot of flank presence for Burrito today. Yeah, Burrito want to get the Knessa. They've got to take basically uh, oh. their core. They've got to get their healer down, and they've got to grab, I think, uh, you know, their flank a little bit earlier, maybe take something Maybe they're out. setting up for a buck here with dropping all of this hard lockdown, the dredge anchor, as well as the deep roots Grover. I mean, that, Grover's a good, just kind of like person to contend with Knessa because you just can't keep poking. Grover doesn't have to reload. You can't stand in your favorite spot and just stand still. Mm, so so yeah. that's a decent idea. At this idea. point, I don't think uh, the Knessa's gonna come out here. Um, I think some type of flank or some no lockdown available for Burrito, uh, the Eevee what District 69 will go into. Sheepa's Eevee, something we haven't seen in a long time, as well as the Barracks. They're going to last pick their healer. Damn, first of all, Eevee in a game, guys. Let's go. Come on, Eevee in, in the pro scene. Haven't seen her in a while. Um, and oh, no, hey, no, 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 Torvald, what? Man. No Torvald to wow. shut it down. Wow. Well, Torvald could come out, to be honest. I mean, That'd last pick, it would be really troll. And I think Not they'd against rather. Shaolin, Victor Drogas. I think There's they'd rather no have a, an Androxus or a Cassie. A Perdo with an Androxus feels like, for me, that's the pick you go for. Cassie could work to deal with the shield. Did they Kinesa? Oh, they're going to grab the Yang. They're going to go for the point stack again into the. Dro Oof. That's risky. That's very risky. That's risky. They got a lot. Burrito have a lot to punish this. I mean, the fireball, if. if Theo goes Scorch, hits big fireballs. We're looking at Barrage, Grenades, Flint, Fire Spit, Salvo. All of the tools in place for Burrito to punish this big stack comp coming out of D69. Well, on the side of Bonker and Burrito, he will grab Recurve. And, of course, Maelstrom. Rock for Lazy now. We saw that be so effective for Spunky. Victor not selected as yet. Scorch for Thiel, who loves himself some Fernando and has played him quite a lot in this history. Gonna reforce Sun Commander on Victor. The extra damage aimed down sights. Fusillade will be the direct damage talent. Bird is taking on the Drogos. Uh, ferocity for Paranos. Grover not going for the deep roots this time around. Doesn't think he's gonna need it. Bugsy going for Reprieve. I like uh, it. So far uh, on Eevee, Sheepa, four to five for his barracks. So Sheepa not playing the Eevee. It's going to be Bugsy, Elven Path on the Makoa. Jera takes a focusing lunge for his Yang. Birdo on the Grover is going to have style? to make a big. Is this style for D69? I don't think this is style, man. I think this is. I think, look at Birdo gets the first blood on the Lazy. I think Frog Isle, Birdo can. Uh, have a serious amount of uh, success with this Grover, to be honest. Uh, but Bonker here already slaying down Elven Path. Deal getting low as well. Perdo finds another one. 730. Oh my god. Perdo is basically taking two of these kills down, finishing the Grog and the Fernando. And this type of zone, these are going to hurt, man. The increased scaling that the first time we've ever seen this uh, in the competitive scene, to my knowledge, on our weekends here for high res. So far, so good. Long range. Wow. Whoa. On a field. What? Two in the row. A thousand plus damage. What is this aim? Rounds Drogos. His wings are clipped. There's a nice crippling throw as well on the Shaolin Perdo. Showing that oh. anyone, mechanical or not, can have the impact on the supports. See you later. Oh, misses the crippling throw. But look at this. Look at this. I cannot believe this Grover play. It is working. It is working. And without a Torvald as well, hot damn, it is working. Grover, Perdo, synergizing so well with this comp and just keeping the long range zone and allowing Elven Path to pick up the hooks like he's been doing so well. Two minutes remain and a little bit of damage coming out. Everyone's just getting chunked left, right, and center burrito. They don't know what to do, Bird. The Drogos does find the first pick in this fight against Jiro, but Elven Path does connect on to Lazy in the back line. Two minutes remain here. Damage dealt being led by the tree. Oh, 20,000 damage with this ferocity. Grover, another 844. The shield comes up just to save his life. He's going for the air shots. He can't find it yet. He hits one more. Grover is really the offensive pressure on this team. I don't believe it. Great Vine up onto the right ledge to stay up top, but now he doesn't have that escape ability. Scorch won't do too much to him. And look at this room that she is just doing he's a distraction nick he just wants to get in the back and make sure they don't keep their eyes onto the grover axis so bugsy did hang on to the reprieve part did not go wormhole um, as you can see he does not have the option to blink back here he's gonna soar to safety ice block he to tried. heal himself up and then he tried to cancel it and blink back on but wasn't able to pull that one off four heads in chat <laughs> for don't miss his uh uh, a crippling throw as well, which is the ones that we've actually seen him miss. The other ones have been largely just, why didn't you heal him, Ferdo? What was that? BM, dude. 
Oh man, maybe this is, I mean, I don't know. Maybe just not thinking about it. He doesn't want to keep his teammates alive because he wants to take top damage. That could be it. He could, this could be a test here. Enemy. And of course, D69 Burrito, they're both going to the uh, the big prize, the big land here. But determining seeding is important and this set is not over. And Burrito have a chance to be able to, you know, tie things up. D69 having taken the first advantage. And there's nothing to say too about just Nick, having the, the mental advantage of saying, we've beaten you twice, man. We have the rhythm. We have the vibe going into this big tournament. Now we're pulling out Grover. <laughs> and we're winning still. 25 seconds remain here for D69 to try and find this conversion. Big damage coming through from Sun Commander. Here's the barrage. Can't find a target. Looking for something, anything. Eevee's going to get into the ice block. Full heal that, but he oh, wow. will go down. Cancels the ice block too early and eats the final barrage shot. Great wow. stuff by there. Maybe just didn't keep track of how many he had there. Now Sun Commander in the back line, not getting pressured so much by the Grover. And the Grover actually down and out of this fight means that the defense will be successful. But boy, Burrito gonna have to change up their strategy against this uh, Ferocity Grover, which is not something that's hit the tongue yet very often. Morale boost two. Huh, even I, though I, he hasn't ulted yet. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit surprised. Everything else looks kind of normal though, Nick. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense because he's going for the more damage legendary. Uh, so all of these factors are going to snowball together and just allow him to have Whirlwind up all the time. Because of that, though, uh, I'd like to see him be a little bit more liberal use with it. the use, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, we haven't seen the Whirlwind come out just yet. A lot of cauterized pressure. Um, so not only is Grover doing a lot of damage, but he's keeping up and healing as well. That's actually pretty impressive. And he's keeping up with the main healer who's out healing everyone as well, Jera. So they've got a decent amount of sustain and they are forcing the Cauterize, which means Elven Path has a little bit more to deal with with the shield. They've got to commit more to really breaking that down. Grover on the low ground already sees that two of his teammates are low. Uh-oh, Forehead Vine there. Can't quite get up to his squad, but Burdo's content to just sit down and throw axes. Lazy, oh, Burn, excuse me, tries to find it. He will slay Perdo, and that's been such a clutch aspect of this fight. Bugsy will get a kill onto Sun Commander here, and they will lose a lot of damage. Bugsy trying to find Bird in the air. He knows the pressure is alive, but he will not die, and he'll stay here against the Ancient Raging Turtle. Yo, comes down as well. So many low targets for him to just run that double him. kill. Doesn't even need the hook, misses it. On to Bird. No cooldowns available for Elven Path. Gonna need to buy himself a couple of seconds here. Bugsy's actually there with the pressure. It's gonna kill Bird. 93% on the point. D69 take another payload. I mean, this is just very, very odd. And of course, you know, we haven't seen the Eevee uh, showcased a lot. We don't know what are the factors, D69 right? D69 are preparing for Oceana. Well, there's too many variables, that I think, to look at as to why things aren't working, right? Is it the Victor, potentially, who doesn't have the mobility to counter the Eevee and counter, really, the Grover, right, to get out of those places very quickly? And maybe he's a little bit more trying to stand there like the Knessa. Uh, is, it, is it the fact that Eevee, which is actually a little bit better than most people think, especially in the hands of Bugsy, is the fact that Ferocity Grover is here and he's healing just as much as Ying and also doing more damage than anybody else on the team. Too many variables, Nick. I don't you're know right. how to count it. I think you're right. It's it's a weird situation, right? There's a lot, you know, we were kind of getting in a rut there with our picks and then all at once, D69 just throw it to the wind. They're taking weird legendaries. They're taking weird characters. They're taking Grover with morale boost two and ferocity, which is just, we haven't, period, have not seen it yet. There's just too much things that are different. Yeah. And they're just using that to their favor. They're using uh, Burrito the fact that they're stuck in their ways a little bit here. Sure. They're playing with a sub. They maybe aren't super comfortable. They've got the Lazy as their main healer, Fernando as their main tank. Just a, a very strange composition uh, for both of these teams. And D69, they're just coming away with it. And can't we at least talk about how this can, this can eventually and forever be just the, the, the game that says doing things different works well. It can happen. He's just uh, chopped down four, Nick. Wants to increase the radius of Blossom with Verdant Expanse. And then Perennial Four, he's just gonna get the cooldown reduced for Blossom by two seconds. Bless up. Let's take a look at Bugsy's loadout as well, because this is a character we haven't seen. And then, you know, after this, so he's learned Cold Blood to reduce Whoa, cooldown. Howling ice Gale? Block, Howling Gale, 40% move speed after Ice Block. So he's just harder to hit uh, coming out of that. And finally, I'd like to look at what Theo's running, because we haven't seen Fernando in a long time either. It's going to be very interesting. The sole frontliner for Burrito running that pretty standard. 
uh, chase you down, build Scorch and Running Start. With Last Stand 3 still in there, though, uh, to give him that healing when he gets down below 50% health, he's going to heal for 225 each second. So hopefully, if that shield doesn't melt, he'll be in a good spot to get some healing back. But he's got so many cooldowns now. Burrito will say, okay, time to get serious. You guys have made this happen way too well and for way too long. Plus, if we lose right now, we lose the whole set. So we're going to basically try our best here. Ooh, nice. Lazy. And everyone on Burrito have done their job. 78%. I don't even know if District 69 will have a chance to get back here with the zone. They don't look like they're trying here. Dismounted, but unable to get back there in time. Jera goes down. Elfpad stunned against the wall. He's going to go down as well. Going to be a great kickstart to this push uh, for Burrito. They're going to be able to get probably 50% of the way done here. Just ignoring that E before time. You see that movement speed? Yeah. Just getting you're just out of range um, of that follow-up shot. A lot of people aren't going to be able to, to track that 40% extra move speed on the EV coming out. It's all about surviving and getting away. Incredibly good play there by Bugsy as well, just healing up the full. Even if he gets shot, it's not going to matter. Nice impel there, trying to get him off the wall. He doesn't have flicker, so he will not heal. And Bugsy actually will slay Bonker. What a 1v1 there between both great players. And Bugsy comes out on top. The shield just separating some of the shock pulse damage there which was very, very good, because that could have gone all the way to the back line and really made a big impact with Lazy on the Maelstrom Rock. Bird here in the Dragon Punch, though. He's trying to find someone. Pretty low HP, though. He will find Jera. Sneaks it around the backside. Fire Spit comes out, not going to connect. Uh, so Cardo will escape full HP. Long range shot from Bugsy is actually going to connect uh, near the payload on the Lazy. Very, very low. Needs that Ice Block healing to come through. Well, minute 22 remaining here. Burrito sitting at about just halfway. Uh, done with this fight. So they're going to need one, maybe one and a half more team fight wins here to find this conversion. It is extremely hard to punish this repeat, reprieve Eevee. And so she can keep being a nuisance and eventually turning you left to right. And then right when you don't think, you think you're safe, Perdo comes in with an axe. Elven Path comes in with a hook. And it's just too much damage to stand as well. Pluck's going to give you that 80% bonus damage that's going to hurt. Uh, if he's able to land that after he draws an old oh boy, Bonker's gonna have to rotate out of that one. Alvin Path still waiting on the side, just gonna maybe hook on to Theo, but these long range axes for Grover set up are gonna be damaging. 40%. 40 seconds remaining on this payload, pushed about 40% of the way. Ancient Rage here. Alvin Path might have to pop this actually. He's gonna be able to retreat as his healer here, Perdo. Topped off Lazy boxing out with Bugsy on the the low ground. Everyone's playing such weird stuff today. This is, this is a strange game. Strange game, but dominated by uh, by a Grover. By a Grover, which is, you know, we've seen Grover quadra kills come out from by OCE. In fact, last night you casted a little bit of the OCE finals there, Nick. Were they still playing Grover? Didn't see any Grover last night. Did not see any Grover uh, in Oceana. Down under. Always a big factor coming into this. Has the Whirlwind available? Frankly, still even with the morale boost three, have only seen the Whirlwind ultimate once out of Grover. Let's his teammate wow. die Seriously. again. But the, the reason here being, I think, is because Burrito cannot win off this team fight. They have to take probably another one if they're going to win here. But they got a lot of momentum on their side. Absolutely, and Bugsy's still alive. That's the big key there. They can't take their eyes off him, but they're going to have to if they want to push this payload forward. And they don't know when he's showing up. Victor there, Sun Commander. Oh, Bugsy, it's two. And Reprieve will keep him alive and immune the salvo, which is such a good, powerful thing for him. Lazy's going to get popped. Nope, will not. Bugsy's just going to wait for some more cooldowns before blinking back in there. However, Sun Commander and Bird find two of the tanks. Bugsy goes with the Ice Storm, and they have committed a few of their resources here. They want to defend this D69. They don't want to let Burrito tie this up and leave it to one final point fight to see who wins. Bugsy will fall. Oh, Bonker finding a nice shot on his Shaolin on Frog Isle. The champion, he beat D69 with at the final. So close to conversion here, just mere inches. All they need is a wow. small window. But the overtime was so long that that's all the window D69 needed to shut it down. And they are able to hold the defense here. So Burrito unable to find, they're not going to be able to find the win here in this round. Hope, or, or they could if they find the payload and conversion here. but. That's looking like a far cry away at this moment. Perdo sitting at morale boost three on this whirlwind. I'd love to see him use it again. There is a lot of cauterized three pressure. Uh, so frankly, the pickup is a little weird, right? Because this is an ultimate. This is probably the hardest falling off ultimate to cauterize. Yep. It's going to be 90% of it yep. is shut down. It's still healing for 250 health per second uh, at that point. She has got a little bit of rejuvenate to help that out, but not going to be effective if it gets shut down. And there are a lot of really good uh, champions to spread the cauterized debuff for Burrito. And again, they have to hit all five though, right, Nick? Because even if five members, you know, three of them are cauterized, still going to do a lot of value for two. 
And that's the key right here. Just a battle between uh, Lazy and Bugsy, but Bugsy's gonna get full health. Sun Commander is right there, ready to go in the Heat Haze. He will not find him yet in Perdo, just hiding around. He gets damage on the Theo, almost kills him. And there's no punish that they can do to Perdo. He's still playing this like a sly fox, but he does see Elven Path in need of trouble. Cauterize is applied. He's finally getting the Blossom, has not used the Whirlwind yet, and there it is. Maybe waiting for the perfect moment to get value. Elven Path, look at that. Still didn't even get past half health thanks to the Cauterize, but that is a lot of damage after the Barrage was used onto the Victor, forcing him out. No follow-up there to get a kill. There's a big hook on the Bonker, shutting him down. Easy on this Grok and Theo coming in hot on the Fernando, but there's the Dome Shield trying to keep them all safe. Immortal comes out to save Theo's own life, but for how long? And that's what you have to count here. Bird is going to be applying so much pressure, but Bugsy picks a double kill up. Bugsy with a triple kill. Bugsy wants this Quadra on Lazy. Is he going to get it, though? Bugsy gets the Quadra here on to Lazy. He's going for the Penta. Oh, saved by the bell. Oh. Oh. Count your blessings here, Eevee's here, Fernando's here. Wow. And Burrito, they fall in the set two games to nothing. Well, D69, again, win their they're head to head against Burrito. Perfect record. Perfect record over the Masters qualifiers. And they're definitely coming to land. They will be in first place for Europe. And uh, they are firing on all cylinders. 84,000 damage from their dose. You're kidding me. Grover, dude. Top damage on the team. 62,000 healing. 62K healing as well. Big healing numbers. Just straight memeing on burrito people are not respecting grover enough man in this meta we're they're Look not at that frown grover's had enough he really has they're not respecting i think flex picks a lot here we see the tyra be absolutely dominant we see the grover come out here be dominant is it really just perdo is it d69 whatever they're doing i love it because they're taking things that people don't respect that they don't consider meta that they don't say we're going to train for this because we know we'll see it they're inventing the game they're reshaping the game yeah. And, they're, and they're making it their own. I mean, they picked this up early, too. I was about to say, like, Burrito drafted, uh, well, you know, Grover's good against a lot of these characters. They're not very fast moving. Uh, you look at Shaolin, you look at Victor, uh, you look at Grok, you look at Fernando. All pretty big targets, pretty slow moving. But D69 second picked the Grover. Yeah. It's not like they picked that with the idea in their head. Like, they already knew what Burrito were going for. They second picked this Grover and still made it work. I mean, they didn't have a tank for quite a while, and they can, I think, when you look at it, you just say, Burrito's probably scratching their heads. Like, what are they doing? Gro Second pick Grover, what, what are they prioritizing? What do they care about? What do we take away? And then they leave themselves maybe a little bit exposed here, and especially didn't expect the Ferocity Grover uh, to come out, I believe, as well. So, match four.